Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Well, whether it's the Microsoft placebo or the bi-yearly, uh-oh, let's make some changes, people are getting really unhappy. One way or another, Blizzard have just rolled out two huge Ws for World of Warcraft moving forwards. Bit of a forward, at this point in time, all of this info, all of these changes are going to be for the retail version of the game. Maybe one day in the future, should all of this go really great on retail, it may be considered for a seasonal server or to have partial implementation on Classic. I personally feel as though some of these are applicable to classic and that the classic player base is both showing repeats of what has happened on retail over many many years as the game is being rolled out in a fashion which largely mirrors its original format so it's not entirely surprising. I can certainly see myself doing a follow-up for classic on this put it like that. I do the occasional retail content here where it fits this is one of the biggest information drops we have heard in such a long time. This is the kind of level of change you would expect with an expansion not midway through one, but I suppose they've had some time and a lot of thinking to do in Shadowlands though. Blizzard are banning boosting communities that operate cross-server on World of Warcraft, as well as with the new content patch, working on adding the ability for Alliance and Horde players to form pre-made parties together for dungeon raids and rated PvP. Let's start off with the boosting stuff. If anything, this does bring into conversation the ways in which players have monetized the raiding content in Classic, way beyond where it ever found itself back in the 2000s, but believe it or not, retail is worse and has been worse for quite a while. Here's the post, we're going to have a quick look through it and then we're going to talk about it. We have found that an increasing disturbance of gameplay experience has been caused by organisations excessively advertising various non-traditional in-game services. As of today, we will now prohibit organisations who offer boosting, matchmaking, escrow, greed, holding money for another party or non-traditional services, including those offered for gold. Though this is very wide in its scope. Noting, however, in both phrases Blizzard are targeting organizations. Moving on, organizations offering across multiple realms and excessively advertising non-traditional in-game sales are contrary to the terms and conditions of the EULA. Okay, a bit more depth to it here, both organizations and those operating across multiple realms. They go on to say, this policy update does not restrict individuals or guilds from using the provided in-game tools to buy or sell in-game items or activities for in-game currency. Kyvex goes on to clarify some points later in the post to the question, but that include things like GDKP runs, where players benefit financially off of other people. He says that depends on the definition of financially. If it means an exchange of gold without a middleman entity, then it sounds like the same sort of guild activities players have been enjoying for 17 years, which are not the focus of the policy update. Unfortunate, GDKPs don't trade via a middleman, gold goes into the pot and then is distributed at the end of the raid. You can still enjoy your legitimate 500k plus gold pot for the end of tier 6. Great. And people are going to hear me say 500k and think, gee, that doesn't sound unreasonable for this early into tier 6. Yes, that's kind of the point. There's been a lot more than this already. So what this means is the big multi-server boosting organizations have finally been trampled by Blizz. My god, it's about time. Just the other day, I hopped into retail to get some footage of the trade chat spam, and I didn't know it was about to become a thing of the past. Logging in today, things are a lot different. These organizations really rose to prominence during Legion and beyond, with the WoW token having existed since Warlords of Draenor, Gold Bloat becoming insanely high in the game, and there was more challenged based content to unlock gears and achievements with raids, arenas, and the newly introduced Mythic Plus. There are a lot of people with a lot of gold that they didn't know what to do with. Due to the nature of the cross-server content on retail, these organizations were able to seek out players who could provide the boost, and then create low-level characters to spam advertisements on every realm possible, casting as wide a net as they could. They would then get paid with the gold, the boosters get their earnings, and then where does the rest of that gold go? Hmm, what could an organization with the sole purpose of making gold do with all that in-game currency? Gee, I wonder. Back in 2020, the Gallywix community was banned following terms of service violations resulting from their actions. In other words, they were selling the gold they made for real money. And so will pretty much every single other one of these mega organizations. There are, in fact, exactly one group of players who genuinely need this volume of gold, and that is the World First Raiders. Blizzard has one way or another made the World First race excessively expensive over the past few expansions, not just the consumables. BOE gear with perfect corruptions in BFF, 
cafe. The reduction in availability of loot from raids in Shadowlands has pushed up the price of BOEs massively, and top guilds will pay for heroic loot in order to effectively still have access to split rooms for their characters, which each individual player will have several. Limit spent 257 million gold in their push to a world first Nazoth kill in Nihilo for the Waking City. You would think Shadowlands would be cheaper than this, you would be wrong. Limit spent a staggering 331 million on their world first of Castle Nathria. That is $57,000 in World of Warcraft tokens if you could legitimately trade the gold back that way again. Guilds have even gotten to the point of advertising buying heroic BOEs on social media. For real, this is all part of the world first race now with all the changes that have been made and the level of competition there is. But overall though, it's goodbye and frankly good riddance to the orgs. Players and guilds can still boost of course. Honestly, not the biggest fan of that either but hey there's a way smaller chance that the gold goes to real money trading and that they actually make use of it themselves for their guild bank personal use or whatever else it may be so we're off to a pretty good start i would say next the faction divide horde versus alliance and a 20 year rivalry and a lot more than that if we count the rts games too and we're about to have barriers broken down between them let's check the post again we have we're working on adding the ability for alliance and horde players to form pre-made parties together for dungeons raids and rated pvp with a focus on organized instance gameplay and to make this an opt-in feature as much as possible. Members of the opposite faction will remain unfriendly while in the outdoor world and hostile in war mode as they do today, though they will be able to communicate through party chat. We are hopeful these changes will serve to actually strengthen faction identity by allowing more players to play the faction whose values, aesthetic, and characters they find more compelling, rather than feeling forced to choose between their personal preference and the ability to play with friends. And to paraphrase at the end, Blizzard say, leaders in your factions have made choices as for who is friend or foe, why can't you do the same? Also note that guilds and random matchmaking will both remain same faction for the time being. The faction divide has been a question posed to Blizzard time and again for years now. One of many of these occasions was a Forbes interview with Ian back during 8.2 in April of 2019, where he said the Alliance Horde divide is something that's integral to Warcraft. This has now changed in the recent announcement to Alliance and Horde identity is what's fundamental to Warcraft. Whilst the game is Warcraft and the factions are supposed to be at odds, the end of every single expansion that has ever been has ended with factions combining against a common enemy. Every single one of them. Go and count them if you really want to. The only exceptions to the rules seem to be when Horde get a crazy war chief who then manages to convince their own faction they don't actually like them. I do think the changes proposed at this point and that will be tested in 9.2.5 miss two big pointers. With Mythic raiding still is not cross-realm until a Hall of Fame has been filled, and no cross-faction guilds. One of the biggest snowballs leading to factions feeling so lopsided and players being unable to play the characters which they find the most fitting for them is the competitive side of WoW. Whilst you can now Mythic Plus and Arena with whoever, Mythic raids will still be shut until Alliance have filled out their 100 members of the Hall of Fame. Horde will still maintain the biggest and best guilds so long as this exists. There are just more overall players, better quality players, and more competitive players. One step at a time though, you just know top guilds will come out with something crazy that nobody's thought of if and when you can cross server and cross faction mythic raid from launch. How about over on Classic then? Well, about two and a half years of progression has shown us that the biggest interest players have is being on a big server over absolutely anything faction related whatsoever. If you aren't on a PvE server, you're probably on a PvP server. Something about doing the same thing and expecting a different result is coming to mind here. We don't have to deal with the cross server problems though, nor is the top end content so difficult that nearly every player is on one faction. Well, that is until faction transfers are a thing in Wrath of the Lich King anyway, which you should expect them to be because they were introduced during that expansion. It's Blizz-like, it's not good for the game-like, and it's whilst making money-like, so it's going to happen. Huge changes overall though, I didn't think we would ever see this direction taken until it made sense story-wise, or at least at the start of an expansion, but I guess at the moment it's just instant content first to test the water. Happy to see the boosting communities go though, thankfully we have never had to deal with that in Classic. Guild-wide boosts are still a thing though, and of course they don't have master loot anymore in retail, which we sure do in classic and is very much being taken advantage of. That's about everything though, let me know your thoughts. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you all in the next one very soon.